everybody. It's a rainy night in Baton Rouge, but we've got baseball for you here on the SEC ESPN Network, a non-conference contest between Northwestern State out of the Southland Conference and the LSU Tigers from the SEC. We welcome you into Alex Box Stadium, Skip Bertman Field, with two-time college baseball World Series champion pitcher Ronnie Rance. I'm Lynn Rollins. Ronnie, LSU took two out of three against Alabama here at Alex Box Stadium over the weekend and now has won three of its last four SEC series. And the Tigers lately have been using a lot of power. They've got 74 home, home runs on the season. Well, LSU had seven home runs in the final two games against the Crimson Tide, two of which came off the bat of co-SEC Player of the Week, Gavin Dugas. Dugas with four for 11 in the series, had a double, a couple of homers, three RBIs, and a 429 on base percentage. Even though it's rainy, the crowd will be very small. This is potentially a very historic night for head coach Paul Maneri. He could reach quite a milestone. Well, with a win tonight, Coach Maneri is going to have 1,500 career wins and would become only the fourth NCAA Division I baseball coach in history to have 1,500 wins and a national championship on his resume. Well, the Northwestern State Demons Lynn, have already punched their ticket to the Southland Conference Tournament as the number five seed currently. That game, that tournament will be played next week at Southeastern and Hammond. Eight teams will make it from the Southland Conference. Northwestern State will be one of those. This is only the third midweek game that Northwestern has played the entire season. It's been uh, about five weeks since they played their last one. Will Helmers, six and one on the season, a 3.34 ERA. 35 innings of work. He has been the go-to guy in midweek games. 31 strikeouts, 14 bases on balls. This is a, a big game for Coach Maneri because beyond the, 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 the individual accolades, he wants to get a lot of these young fresh freshman pitchers, these young pitchers, some mound time because not only are they going to count on this weekend, but the SEC tournament's next week, and you might play four or five games next week. So Helmers with a 6-1 and one record already. He's got the potential, Ronnie, of uh, – Perhaps seven, eight, maybe nine wins, depending on what happens uh, over the weekend and in the SEC tournament and potential postseason play. If I'm not mistaken, Mikhail Hilliard was the last nine-game winner as a freshman. That was his highest total. Hilliard was nine and five. And talking about Hilliard, that's a guy that's been pitching very well lately. Yeah, Mikhail Hilliard having a little bounce back. Uh, had the fantastic freshman season, kind of book in it, book ending his career as a senior. Uh, has uh, been outstanding, went five innings, got the win on the third game of the series uh, against Alabama, and he's feeling really good about himself in Palmineri, you know, pitching in that third game, but almost pitching like an ace the last few weeks in SEC play. Northwestern State has not scored a lot of runs this year. It's a team that does not have a 300 hitter in tonight's lineup. Larson Fontenot at the top is the best batter at 283. And it's also a team whose leader in home runs is Dante Stewart. He's got seven. So it's a team that's had to manufacture some runs to rely on some good pitching. And here we go against all odds because of the tremendous amount of rain that has fallen in the last 48 hours or so. And a quick start for Larson Fontenot as he bangs the first pitch solidly into left field. And, Ronnie, it's going to be interesting to watch the outfielders negotiate the slop out there on this artificial, on this uh, natural surface. Well, if you're the Demons, you got to like that first pitch swinging. A lot of times that leadoff batter will take a lot of pitches, but not the case as Fontenot jumped on that 88-mile-an-hour heater. Here's Dante Stewart. He's batting 277, seven homers, and a team leading 30 driven in. The grounds crew here did fantastic work over the last many hours to uh, to get this field in playing shape. There's a twin killing 5-4-3, even though Drew Bianco had trouble finding the ball in his glove. He double clutched it, but still, Doty, Bianco, Morgan turn it over. Let's check LSU defensively. Dugas and Giacomo and Cruz in the outfield from left to right. Doty and Thompson on the left side of the infield. Bianco and Morgan on the right side. Alex Malazzo is catching Will Helmers. So two, two quick outs and early swinging by the first two Northwestern batters. Here's Tyler Smith hitting 196. You don't say that much for a three-hole hitter. Yeah, you mentioned 
how uh, the demons are are batting 226 I believe yeah as a team but the, what's what's kept them in it Lynn is that they can pitch it a little bit the opponents are only batting 229 indeed that's been the story of the season for Northwestern State Bianco hits catches the soft liner a five pitch inning a good start for Helmers even though there was a base hit LSU is coming to the plate when we return. A lot of folks ask me how to get their dishes as clean as possible. I tell them, try Cascade Platinum, plus the power of Oxy. It breaks down food soils to clean up to 99% of visible and invisible food residue for a hygienic clean you can see and feel. Cascade, plus the power of Oxy. Moment of truth. The dishes are clean, but are they dry? Yeah, they are. Thanks to Cascade Power Dry Rinse Aid from the number one most trusted brand. Get your dishes clean, dry, done. With Cascade Detergent plus Power Dry. There may be trouble ahead But while there's moonlight and music and love and romance Let's face the music and dance To our grocery delivery with Prime It's a gray evening in Baton Rouge, light rain, but we continue play here in the bottom of the first inning. LSU and Northwestern State, there is no score. Let's take a look at Ethan Francis on the hill for Northwestern State. This is his seventh appearance. It's his first start this year. He's only worked five and a third innings. I'm sure we'll see a number of different pitchers. The Canadians, a sophomore, tell you a little bit about his numbers. 6.75 earned run average. You see just a little bit of work, five and a third innings. He has uh, struck out five, walked six. But I, I'm sure he is the first of a carousel of demon hurlers today. Opponents are only hitting 200 against him, but he's gotten in trouble with those six walks in five innings. LSU's offense looks like this, and there are one, two, three, four, five, 300 hitters in the lineup, including the first five in the order. So that part of the lineup, the top half has been really difficult to handle this year. Drew Bianco is improving and Mitchell Sanford is in the lineup as the DH. He's hitting 288. So this Northwestern State team will have to get through some meat and potatoes early in the lineup. Here is Trey Morgan batting 376 in his rookie year. Five homers and 36 driven in, which is third on the team in the leadoff position. This game was originally scheduled to start at 630. They moved it up to five o'clock and I got to be honest with you, Lynn, I am stunned, shocked and amazed that we're playing baseball here in Baton Rouge. I really thought that uh, the weather was going to get us. It shows the commitment that LSU's had to getting this game in. It's the last regular season uh, game at home for the Tigers, and they've got a lot of seniors they want to play today. They've got a young, a lot of young freshmen that uh, that need to get some experience for the SEC tournament next week. And of course, Paul Maneri would love nothing better than to get career 1500 win at home versus on the road this weekend. Boy, that rolls off the tongue rather easily, 1,500 wins. But it represents many, many years of high win totals. And it represents truly a name among the very elite in the history of college baseball. The winningest active coach in that category. The 2-1 pitch is grounded to the right side. And the routine ground ball handled by Dante Stewart. I don't know if Ethan Francis uh, truly uh, gets the magnitude of that pitch right there, but Trey Morgan's been on fire the last six, seven games. Here's Dylan Cruz, who's carrying a 355 average late in his rookie season. 12 homers, that second on the club, 33 driven in. That's fourth behind Dugas and Doty and Morgan. Gavin Dugas will follow. That one got.
got away from him a little bit. That wouldn't have been a strike if Shaquille O'Neal would have been at the plate. That was way over the catcher's head. Yeah, ball might be a little bit wet. There's the one. Oh, my goodness. That made the screen on the fly. <laughs> That ball just, you know, it's it was kind of spitting and a little bit rainy. I'm sure uh, the grip was a little difficult on that fastball. All right, Dylan Cruz should see a good pitch here, 3-1, especially against a pitcher that struggled with his command. You'd think a fastball's coming. It's too far inside. Cruz is aboard. Let's check Northwestern State defensively. Cunert, Fontno, Smith from left to right in the pasture. Davis and Stewart on the right side of the infield. Sibley and Hayes on the left side. Skinner is catching. Cruz has stolen four, uh, 11 bases in 13 tries. He was taking a huge lead on that first pitch and did not, not draw one whit of attention from Ethan Francis. Well, if he does it again, he may take off. He's not going to give him any attention. Look at that lead. Sometimes, you know, when you see the big lead, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going. Sometimes right. it's just a, a one-way lead. You want to draw a throw, see what kind of move they have, and maybe if you get lucky, they'll throw it down the right field line and you'll throw a triple. One ball, one strike on Gavin Dugas. He's had the power stick working lately. 14 home runs. That leads the team. 57 driven in in 50 games. Dugas is brushed back again. Two balls and a strike. Gavin Dugas averaged 301 on the year. He's hit 270 in SEC play, but he's got 11 home runs. In, in 27 SEC games, that is incredible. And a lot of times you see guys kind of clean up on non-conference pitching, maybe hit a bunch of homers or get a high average out of conference. But for Dugas, he has been his best in conference, has a slugging percentage at 570, actually 670, I believe. You need a LASIK tune-up? Runner is moving on the 3-1 pitch. This ball is lifted high in foul ground over near the tarp, and uh, it falls out of the reach of Jake Hayes, who appeared to have it lined up, but then underran it a bit. And you see uh, going up by the tarp. Once you kind of draw contact with the tarp, he probably just got the uh, lost his focus just a little bit. He's, you know, obviously not familiar with playing at the box. That's the uh, that's that's what happens when you're the visiting team. Not quite sure of the your surroundings and foul territory. There's ball four. So back to back walks to Cruz and Dugas. Well, that's been the issue for Francis in his small sample size of work so far this year. Now with the out today, five and two thirds innings, and he's walked eight. That's just way too many. And then now, law of averages say somebody's going to get a hit, and that's how a big inning happens. Kate Doty is batting 302 with 11 homers and 47 driven in. He missed five games earlier with an early season injury. And he's got those 47 RBI in 46 games. So Ronnie, between Dugas and Doty, the double D guys, 
They have produced a lot of runs. Driven in between them. Well over one per game. So, you know, next year when the name, image, and likeness uh, goes into effect, potentially in Louisiana, like in many other states where athletes can, you know, potentially uh, make some money with their name, image, and likeness, I think Doty and Dugas, they could uh, they could make some money together, right, the Double D boys? So they could franchise it. Mm -hmm. Remember where you heard it first, though. This is lifted up the elevator shaft and finally comes down out of the gray skies into the glove of the shortstop, Cam Sibley. What Cam Sibley with the good locks, the golden locks right there at shortstop. That's a heck of a look. How come you notice those things? I mean, it's, do you ever see a shortstop with an achy, breaky heart look like that? I mean, that's pretty good. I do like the achy breaky reference mm -hmm. though. Two outs. Here's Giovanni De Giacomo. Not once but twice he homered in his last game. He picks on the first pitch and rolls it down to Stewart. And the Demons get out of the inning despite a couple of walks. Nothing got out of the infield for LSU. We go to the second. We are scoreless on the SEC ESPN Network. Finding the right deodorant hasn't always been easy because guys don't all sweat the same. So Harry's makes three levels of protection for the way you sweat. For the light sweaters, the medium sweaters, and the heavy sweaters. Because we all deserve to go through life with our wings up. Introducing the range of deodorants from Harry's. Not the same. Oh, that's a low price. Oh, that's a low price. Oh, that is a low price. What's a low price? Oh, that's a low price. Can you let me shop? Mmm, that's a low price. I can get you a new one tomorrow. At Amazon, any time is a good time to save. Let's look at some numbers as we get set to close out the regular season. You see Northwestern State hitting 226. You mentioned that earlier, Ronnie, but their pitching staff has done just about the same thing with the other team. Yeah, opponents are batting only 229 against Northwestern State. That's kind of what's kept them in this thing, and they've just been really good at tight games in their league. The Southland Conference this year it's more of an emphasis on pitching because they play four games in a weekend, no midweek games in the Southland Conference. That is a tough task for any uh, conference. I mean, even if the SEC played four games in a weekend, there would be uh, coaches complaining. But the Southland has made that decision, and they have done a nice job of holding their season together. Right now, the five seed in the Southland Conference tournament in Hammond next week. 26 and 24 on the year is Northwestern State. Hammond just hosted the Southland Conference softball championship, which was won by the three seed McNeese. And that's a team that will be here this weekend in regional play. Jeffrey Elkins at the plate. The 3 1 pitch. Fouled off to the right side. Morgan is chasing, and that one is out of his reach on the screen. I'll tell you, 2021 is going to be remembered for a lot of things, obviously. Ooh, that's it. Well. Yes, it is. It's going way, way back, and it is gone over the bleachers down the left field line. Jeffrey Elkins smashes one over the bleachers, his sixth home run of the season. And a team that does not hit a lot of home runs at all 
gets one from Elkins. A big moment for that young man in Alex Box Stadium, Skip Bertman Field. Yeah, he got all of it. Fastball down and in. He knew when he got it, it was gone. This is a back row shot up in the bleachers right below that community coffee sign. And Elkins second on the team now in homers with six. Rocking the number 54 jersey. You don't see that a whole lot. Elkins started off his career playing for the Raging Cajuns and then out of Lafayette transferred to Northwestern State. And that'll be a thrill for that young man. One nothing demons Cam Sibley the shortstop at the plate. You want to say anything else about him while he's at the plate. The shortstop. <laughs> I mean trust me it's. It's respect mad respect for the for the locks. I haven't been able to grow anything I think like you're that in 30 a years. Bit. 100%. That's exactly what it is. But no, I was going to say 2021 Lynn is is just as much going to be remembered for all the hairdos all around college baseball. I Good mean, point. LSU's got, you know, folks stayed away from barbers for a while. Giovanni DiGiacomo's got some really good uh, hair in center field. Uh, you know, Trey Morgan at first base is he and Sibley might be related. They've got similar. So who's the hair. Rapunzel of the team? Uh, I don't know. Who do you think? It's got to be DiGiacomo or Money. Ooh, Money's pretty good. We haven't seen Blake Money's. Uh, Quaff in a few days. The pitch by Helmers up and away, a little off the zone with two strikes. Lenny Kunert at the plate, the left fielder. And it is raining. You see a little bit on your screen. Rain this is a four letter word. How about Lenny Kunert at the plate, local boy. You know, went to Live Oak High School in Denham Springs. And uh, Lenny. Boy, what a journey he has had in his career. He actually committed to play at LSU as a sophomore in high school, then ended up as a verbal commitment to Wichita State. Never spent time there, ended up in Nat at Natchitoches and was a part of their regional team a couple years ago that won had a, won a big game over in Corvallis, Oregon. And I think he's, I think Lenny's, this is six year, a fifth or, I think it's a six year, I believe. Did you see how far Trey Morgan runs to get this? You don't see many first basemen literally go 45 feet from his position. He was halfway to second base. And then on a close hookup with Helmer's covering, they get the out. Helmer's lucky he didn't get spiked right there. As he, Indeed. You know, when you're covering first as a pitch, you want to get to the bag and then act as a first baseman unless it's a flip situation where you're running through. That time he needed to go diagonally to the bag, stop, and then stretch like a first baseman. He lost his footing, and then he reached back, and he's lucky Kuner didn't spike him. Did you ever take one to the Tootsie when you were pitching? Absolutely, for sure. Okay, let's see. Does he get spiked? He reaches back there, and Kuner steps right Ooh. on his foot. Boy, he is fortunate that, Ouch. that that's not a serious injury. That's incredibly fortunate for Helmers. Well, he, the shoe, it, it, it obviously looked like protected him a little bit. If that's more the heel or ankle, you know, you, then, then he would have really been injured. But uh, boy, it's not so much the puncture that you're worried about as it is perhaps a broken foot or ankle. You know, all that weight came down right on his foot. That's incredible. But you took a, a blow or two when you were covering yeah, first? Yeah, I had a couple of. I've had a couple of uh, bloody sanitary socks over the years from from just little getting spiked occasionally. There's the first base on balls from Helmers as Skinner is aboard. And this will bring on Peyton Davis. Jeffrey Elkins homered deep into the left field bleachers to get this second inning started. The outfield has really backed up for Peyton Davis. Dugas in left field is just a few steps in front of the warning track. Now the wind is blowing briskly toward left center. There you see Dugas a couple of more steps backward. He could be scratching his back on the fence. And everybody else is deep in the outfield as well. 
Peyton Davis at the plate at the plate is 6'4, 220 pounds. He's from Bozier City. Went to the same high school as Hayden Travinsky, Airline High School. They were teammates. How about that lineup? Big uh, big Hayden Travinsky and Peyton Davis back to back. That's a pretty good combo. Three homers, 13 driven in for Davis. That pitch is elevated. Davis has started 34 games of the 50 on the ledger for the Demons. One two pitch swing and a miss the inning is over. But Jeffrey Elkins. Homer to get things started for Northwestern State his sixth of the year. This one left the bat in a hurry and got to the outfield in a hurry. A demon dinger. And that produces a one nothing lead for Northwestern State. Did you know the source of odor in your home could be all your soft surfaces? Odors get trapped in your home's fabrics and resurface over time. Febreze Fabric Refresher eliminates odors. Its water-based formula safely penetrates fabrics where odors hide. Spray it on your rugs, your curtains, your furniture, all over your home to make it part of your tidying up routine. Febreze Fabric Refresher for an all-over freshness you'll love. That's a low price. Oh, that's a low price. Oh, that is a low price. What's a low price? Oh, that's a low price. Can you let me shop? Mmm, that's a low price. I can get you a new one tomorrow. At Amazon, any time is a good time to save. This Northwestern LSU series started in 1937. LSU has won 59 times and dropped 12 games. The Tigers have won 21 of the past 23. Northwestern State beat LSU in 2011 and 2019. But for the most part, it's been all Tigers against the Demons. Here's Drew Bianco. Ronnie, would you believe it if I told you that Bianco among players right now at LSU in this lineup has reached base more times consecutively than anybody else. Yeah, that definitely would be a surprise based on the slow start to the season that Drew has had. But how about this, Lynn? He's uh, played in 19 SEC games, started 11, and Bianco's hit 279. He's that's, reached base 15 straight time, 15 and 15 straight games, and that's most right now for LSU. Yeah, that 279 average is like fourth best amongst regulars. So uh, he's really come on in the last 30, uh, 30 days. Mitchell Sanford thought about swinging at the first pitch. It's a strike. Sanford has quietly moved his average to yep. 288. Thought this pitch was up and it definitely is at the upper region of the strike zone. Sanford is making his 10th start. He's appeared in 33 games. You and I met his father and a contingent of buddies from his hometown of what a week and a half or two ago. That's right. He's from the Morgan City Berwick area and a fine catch in right field by Tyler Smith. He left his feet to get it. That was a pretty well hit ball, but Tyler Smith was there to come toward the infield quickly and grab it. That's a heck of a grab on a wet surface, as you can see. But Mitchell Sanford, uh, it's actually seven for 22 in SEC play. That's a 318 average. So some of you fans may be surprised to, to hear that number, but he's been. Uh, He's done well. Here's Jordan Thompson batting 253. He swings and misses at the first pitch. Eight homers, 24 driven in. He's got more home runs by a large margin than doubles and triples combined. He's got two doubles and a triple this year and eight home runs. 86 miles an hour in that fastball. That was definitely a pitch to hit. 
by Thompson. Maybe overswung just a little bit because it was right down Main Street. Thompson with that wide stance. And ropes one into center field. Ronnie, that's an excellent job of recovering. Very little movement in his legs, but he just pivoted the hips. Watch this, just right there, just was very solid at the plate. Didn't try to overdrive the ball and produces a two out base hit. Yeah, just playing a little pepper with it. And that's, I, th I thought he overswung a little bit on that 0-1. I thought he tried to really run that ball out of the yard, but you saw just less is more sometimes. And he just uh, was able to barrel it up and give LSU a chance, see if Thompson maybe they start him a little bit. Try to steal here. The Tigers' first base hit comes with two out in the second inning. Alonzo at the plate. Alex with six driven in, no homers. This is his 36th start behind the dish. One ball, one strike. On LSU's catcher, Alex Milazzo. Milazzo lifts it to shallow right field. Tyler Smith is there, and that is the third out. A two-out single by Jordan Thompson, but no damage. After two innings in Baton Rouge, it's Northwestern State one, LSU nothing. with Canva. Folks in purple certainly are appropriately dressed tonight. A light rain is falling. Northwestern State on a home run by Jeffrey Elkins leads 1-0, and the Tigers have gone to the bullpen for the first of what will be many relievers. This is Blake Money, the big freshman from Spring Hill, Tennessee. Had a lot of work early on in the season, first half of the year, 27 innings pitched, uh, gave up 36 hits. 26 Ks, the 10 walks, not bad. You know, for Blake Money, I, I thought, Lynn, he was making some progress out of the bullpen. The LSU tried him out a couple times as a starter on the third game of the series in the SEC in back-to-back -back weeks. It didn't go well, and I think the numbers got a little bit exaggerated, and maybe he'd lost a little of his confidence. But this is a guy, Blake Money, that if they're going to make a postseason run, he's going to have to give him some quality innings. And he's also pitching for next year. This is a guy that they're going to rely on heavily next season. And since you have referred to the uh, hairdos, I, I think money has more lettuce than anybody on, on yeah, the LSU team. It's definitely he and DiGiacomo with the battle, but uh, I've got to give the big fella probably the victory. At six foot seven, he technically probably has more <laughs> hair than Giovanni DiGiacomo. Ooh, but it's a battle. It is close. It's close. Our camera guys who worked so hard, not just today, but every time we turn on the red lights, they are there many hours before the game, many hours afterward, bringing you the best of the action. This will be our final LSU produced broadcast of the season on the SEC ESPN network. Jake Hayes at the bottom of the order for Northwestern State. Jake Hayes, 5'9", 165-pound freshman transfer. Went to South Mountain Community College out in Arizona. He's from Colorado. So 
Bobby Barbier with the national recruiting budget going to get in the Juco transfer from the Phoenix area. Money strikes Jake Hayes out looking. There's Barbier. Just couldn't pull the trigger. You see Hayes kind of talking to himself a little bit. Sometimes uh, that ball kind of ran back over the plate. Good pitch by Money. Had a little late movement on it. He thought it was going to be inside, and it wasn't. By the way, Northwestern State's Barbier and LSU's Barbier Blair are not related. Blair they, they're, at, they're asked that virtually every day. Oh, right. But Blair Barbier, of course, played at LSU in 1997. Bobby looks a little bit like Blair. Yeah, they could a, be, a, right? a, a, a younger version. Blair Barbier, to me, was one of those Tigers, all-time Tigers, who maximized his physical skills and brought a great deal of grit and determination to the ballpark in every game he participated. Well, he also was the captain of the 2000 uh, National Championship team for LSU, so that's all you need to know. But Bobby Barbier, he's had a, a nice career at Northwestern State. Uh, since Lane Burroughs left and right. went to Louisiana Tech and has done a great job there. Bobby named the 2018 Southland Conference Coach of the Year as he led them to a regional. The 3-2 pitch. Fouled off of Malazzo and that hurt. You can tell he is frustrated, he is hurt. And what Ooh. is he grabbing? Oh, that's not good. Is now I'm not sure. Now hopefully they'll it's, they'll take a look at him, and he is in a lot of discomfort. Discomfort is too nice of a word. That is pure pain. Well, for and quite frankly, there are, there there aren't a lot of alternatives at the catching position. Let's see where he gets hit. Oh, turn your head. Turn your head if, if uh, mm. you know, that's a that's a, a situation where hopefully, you know, there's no long lasting effects for Malazzo because as you mentioned, uh, you know, I mean, I think if he has to come out of this game, Braden Doty, probably the senior on senior day in the sense that it's the last home game would probably be the catcher that would come in and go the rest of the way. But for, Mal for LSU though, in SEC play, they had they had a lot. They started to get a lot of confidence in Hayden Travinsky, um, and he was playing a little bit, getting some SEC starts. Well, Hayden Travinsky is is not available. He's out for the rest of the that's, year. With that's Armstrong. Jake Wyeth getting ready. So and so now they're going to let uh, Wyeth go get loose a little bit. JUCO transfer. It may take a cart to get Malazzo off the field, and there's no sense hurrying. My goodness. That'll turn your beans into hummus. Three thirty down the lines here. And Malazzo may just take a little try to get off the the field. So you want to be a catcher, huh? That hurts a lot. You played that position. You ever have a moment like that where you just had to get carried off? Fortunately not. Now well, Jake Wyeth, it's just like a, a pitcher that uh, gets replaced due to injury. The, the new player, they gave you a little extra time. I mean, you got enough time to kind of put all your gear on, get a little stretched out. So Wyeth is about to come in so Alex Malazzo will leave the game after being struck by a foul ball and Wyeth will get a few warm-up tosses from Blake money
Pulmonary, 1,499 victories, the most of any active coach in America. The 3 2 pitch hit sharply up the middle, and it's out of the reach of the diving Jordan Thompson. So Fontenot is two for two at the top of the order. Fontenot first pitch swinging again. That time is actually a ball up out of the zone, but not a bad approach, right? I mean, you go up there just hunting that fastball and anything near the plate, put a swing on it. Money with kind of a little just after the delay, a little get it over fastball, and he took he made the most of it. Dante Stewart bounced out into a double play last time, 5-4-3. Doty, Bianco, and Morgan. Dante Stewart out of the Woodlands, Texas, went to Woodland High School. A freshman. Had a nice year, too, for a freshman. 277 average has started and played in every, uh, every game this year. He and Hayes at the bottom of the order are both freshmen, the only two in the lineup. And Stewart responds with a sharp single to left field. Yeah, that's base hit number 50 on the season for Dante Stewart. That's quite an accomplishment. 50 hits in 51 games. Just jumped all over that Blake Money heater. Had a 1 0, had a pitch, uh, hitter's count, attacked the zone. You know, Ronnie, it's amazing. We know the outfield is soft, but so far we have seen true bounces. We have not seen anybody slip. It's amazing the way this field has soaked up the rainfall, and there were many, many, many issues, uh, inches of it, and many issues around town with flooding. Most schools were let out today. LSU was not in operation. But yeah. baseball at the box is. Yeah, thoughts and prayers to all the folks in South Louisiana that have been dealing with flooding, particularly in Lake Charles. Oh, my They've goodness, yes. Horrible, uh, horrible flooding in Lake Charles. We've, we've had some terrible flooding in the Baton Rouge area and all across South Louisiana. It's and unfortunately, more rain to come, according to the weatherman, in the next couple of days. Tyler Smith at the plate. He hit a soft liner. To Bianco last time. Lake Money starting to heat up a little bit. 92 on that one. Will Helmer started. He went the first two innings. He allowed a base hit to open the game and an Elkins home run. He walked one and struck out two. Tyler Smith at the place went, plate went to Covington High School, his hometown's Franklinton on the North Shore of New Orleans. The Giacomo makes the catch, and the throw to third base is on line, but late. He was just too far back, the Giacomo was, to have any chance of getting Fontenot. Uh, two outs and runners on the corners for the Demons. This brings up the home run guy, Jeffrey Elkins. He hit number six last time. Jeffrey Elkins went to Ascension Episcopal High School in the Lafayette area. Excellent student, honorable mention. All Southland Conference in the classroom in 2019. Then in 2020, he made the Commissioner Spring honor roll. Hammond will be hosting the Southland Conference Baseball Championship Tournament, Southeastern Louisiana, the host school. That's a place that uh, just finished with the Southland Conference Softball Championship. Is there a play? Morgan watches that one up into the bleachers. Let's go back and look at the swing by Jeffrey Elkins, which produced the game's only run. Jeffrey Elkins has had a big May. He's uh, starting to heat up, and that time jumped all over that offering, that Hel Will Helmer's offering. I think it actually what, cleared the fence. So it did. Cleared the, the bleachers. 
out there and left. That was pretty good. He had a walk off home run, Lynn, back on May the 9th against McNeese. First walk off homer of actually a walk off hit. It was a base hit. Came in the 10th inning against McNeese. And he rips one up the middle with authority, scoring the runner from third. Elkins has driven in both Demon runs. That was a slasher right back from whence it came. Elkins much better than his 213 average today. Came in batting only 213. Has had some big hits this year. Playing big here today. A homer, another RBI, two RBI now for the young man from Lafayette. Runners at second and first with two outs and a run in. So both Helmers and Money have been reached for one run. Here's Cam Sibley, who struck out last time. He's first pitch swinging and lifts it out of play. After Hayes struck out, Fontenot singled, Stewart singled. Smith fly to center, moving Fontenot from second to third. And Elkins has followed with a sharp RBI base hit up the middle. Two runs, five hits early for Northwestern State. Cam Sibley at the plate went to Dutchtown High School, which is uh, in Geismer. When he was at Dutchtown, I don't think uh, Chris Sheck Snyder, Coach Shake let him have that, the dyed hair with the long hair look. He lines it out to right field. It's propelled nicely, but Dylan Cruz moves to his left to get it. But the Demons get another run on this RBI single by Elkins right back up the middle. That scored Fontenot. And Northwestern State leads 2-0 after two and a half here in Baton Rouge. presentations with Canva. We didn't just build another hybrid. We built a hard charging 37 mile per gallon turbo hybrid with the range and power to find your next story. Wherever it might be. The 2021 Sorrento Turbo Hybrid, the world's first storytelling machine. It's been a good start for Northwestern State. Two runs, five hits. LSU no runs, one hit. Ethan Francis has been lifted, and Peyton Graham has come out of the bullpen. This senior from Wiley, Texas, making his fourth appearance. He hasn't pitched much. Well, he had the surgery missed all of last season, and it's been slow to come back, but it's the first pitcher I've seen wear shorts uh, in college baseball. Literally, you see uh, you see a little leg there. So, he actually, uh, it's the, the retro throwback Chicago White Sox unis from the earlier 80s. Remember that, Lynn? They had a, a little time where they had uh, late 70s, I, early I, 80s I where do. they wore shorts. I, I do, but you, you, can, you can see where the top of the stocking <laughs> stops in a – an inch or two of it's his thing by the skin way between the, uh, the the shorts and that's yeah. all you can that's the only way you can describe them what's well, a lot of knickers they're kind of like knickers yeah. right yeah Payne Stewart look pantaloons <laughs> hey whatever man whatever you got to do to, to get you motivated and get you fired up I'm sure the teammates love it Peyton Graham from Wiley Texas Went to Murray State College originally for transferring to Northwestern State. Trey Morgan at the top of the order brings a 10 game hitting streak into today's game. He grounded out to the second baseman last time. Two balls and no strikes to the rookie first baseman. Peyton Graham on the mound for the Demons. Uh, he's got himself a, a, a national championship ring, Lynn. Uh, 
2017 he was a part of junior college national championship team at Murray State College. He struck out 71 batters in 60 innings. And during his Juco career, so. And he had a nice first season at NSU before, you know, missing all of last year with the, with surgery. And I guess if you're gonna be out with surgery, you want it to happen during a, a COVID year, when you only played a month anyway. The 2019, his first year at Northwestern State, he appeared in 14 games. He actually had four scoreless appearances at least two innings or more that year. Trey Morgan draws a base on Bowles. So Graham comes out of the bullpen to walk Morgan. NSU pitching has issued three passes, but so far they have not been damaging. Here's Cruz who walked in the first. Ethan Francis pitched the first two innings, gave up a hit, a couple of walks, did not strike out anybody. Strike one to Dylan Cruz, who has a four-game hitting streak. Law of averages say those walks are going to catch up to the Demons, though, eventually, and they could catch up right here. And Dylan Cruz, who's been locked in offensively for much of the year and especially lately average all the way up to 355. You yeah. know you mentioned earlier talking about how most of the games for Northwestern State in fact all but three have been four game SLC series. This is only the third midweek game for Northwestern. They had they've had one at home and now two on the road. There was talk for a week or 10 days that, that the SEC, certainly it was considered, it didn't gain much traction, but there, there was thought that perhaps the SEC would go to a four game series as well. Well, that's something that I know when I, I talked to some of the LSU coaches in January when that was being bandied about in the league and that they were not in favor of that. Um, even though the, the, the SEC, particularly this year with the restrictions on Roster limitations being lifted. LSU's got 19 different pitchers pitched this year. So they would have had enough pitching to play four games in a weekend. It just, uh, you know, you imagine sometimes those Sunday games can get a little high score and imagine playing four. I've actually been surprised when I've watched, looked at the Southland Conference bo box scores. I've expected to see that fourth game be, you know, 10 11 or, you know, 13 12. And it hasn't been. I've been really surprised by the quality of pitching in game four in three days. When the SEC was considering or pondering a four game SEC series that was when there were no other games on the table. It was going to be an SEC series only an SEC season only. Well, you which I think the Big Ten is doing that right. Big, I know I yeah, think Big it has not playing ball. anybody out of conference. Yeah. But you know here's the thing Lynn is that the reason I think the reason that the SEC mainly didn't consider it for very long was because imagine if and again we don't know how many games they would have played but let's just say there's 14 teams in the league you play 13 games that's 52 games if you play all four game series right what you could be a pretty good team and have a losing record right I mean you, if you go 20 and 32 in the SEC and play four games against everybody I think it would have hurt the number of teams that the SEC is going to get into the NCAA tournament. Runner on the move and Cruz fouls off another pitch. So it just means more, right? Well, the SEC this year is hoping to get 10 teams into the big dance. We'll see if that happens. But I think for sure they'll get nine. And if you would have played 52 games against just SEC teams, no way the league would have gotten, you know, would get nine or 10 teams or even get close to even considering getting nine or ten teams into the big dance because the records would have been skewed. Here comes the eighth pitch to Cruz.
A check swing ground ball to the left side. To second for one, the relay to first base, not in time. Cruz is able to beat the relay throw from Stewart. But he is aboard after forcing Morgan at second base. Oh, excellent pitch. You see uh, Cruz with a little, excuse me, check swing. Great feed by Sibley. Throw a little high, wouldn't have mattered. Cruz beat it out anyway. That's always frustrating for a hitter when you check swing and make contact a, a little, uh-oh, excuse me. Gavin Dugas drew a walk in the first. Ball one inside. They pitched Dugas almost exclusively inside in the first inning. Those two power numbers you see, 14 homers and 57 RBI, are tops on the team and among the better numbers in the SEC. One on, one out. Kate Doty is on deck. Cruz takes his lead from first. This will be the last game of the season for the Tigers in Baton Rouge. NSU's last midweek game was over a month ago. Three balls and a strike. Let's see if Dugas gets a hitter's pitch here. Cruz wow. is picked off by Peyton Graham. On a 3-1 count, too. That's a that's a no-no, Lynn. I mean, you got Gavin Dugas at the plate, who's got 11 home runs just in SEC play. He's been red hot. You know he's, he's thinking extra, extra base hits, and I don't even know if Cruz was even stealing. I just think he kind of had a, a lapse in, in attention right there and just kind of got caught flat-footed. He definitely didn't break or flinch to second as if he was stealing. I just think he kind of was a little nonchalant and uh, and got picked off. Dugas on the next pitch draws a base on balls. So instead of one out and two aboard, there are two outs and one on base. Here's Kate Doty who popped up to the shortstop last time. He's on a three-game hitting streak and a 14-game reach base streak. Strike one. The wind is in the favor of right-handed pull hitters. Blowing briskly from right to left. Doty hits one high in the air to right field. Smith is still running, and that ball drops. And the Tigers wind up with runners at second and third. Peyton Davis was chasing from the infield, so was Stewart. Smith had to run a long way from deep right field. Nobody could get it. And Doty collects his eighth double of the year on a ball that was hit higher than it was far. That ball just kind of found the Bermuda Triangle, just the perfect spot. In between three defenders, LSU with a little, uh, little good fortune that time. Probably the softest hit double of the year for Doty. Although we did see a 12-foot double earlier this year. We did. Here's to Giacomo. 
He hit career home runs number two and three in the same game against Alabama. Giacomo has been a good hitter with Brenner's in scoring position. He's got a 385 clip in those situations. That looked like an off speed pitch. Two runs, five hits, and no errors for the Demons. No runs, two hits, no errors for LSU. A base hit would likely tie the game. That was another off speed pitch, and the Giacomo was ahead of it. LSU series against Texas AM will be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Six o'clock, six thirty, and two o'clock are the game times. Three balls and two strikes. Drew Bianco is on deck. First base is unoccupied. Graham is taking a long time between pitches. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss to Giacomo. Strikes out, leaving a pair of runners in scoring position. LSU hitters today, Lynn, expanding the zone, helping out the Demon pitchers keep it close and keep the lead. It's still 2 0, Northwestern State leading. These are Smile Direct Club aligners. They can turn a smile like this into a smile like this in as little as four to six months for less than $3 a day. Choose Smile. Get started for free at SmileDirectClub.com. Smile Club. Let's talk about teeth straightening. Why does Invisalign cost so much? Smile Direct Club costs 60% less than Invisalign, and it's guaranteed for life. Choose Smile. Get started for free at SmileDirectClub.com. Well, there's a welcome sight off in the distance. Some patches of blue peeking through right now after solid gray ominous skies for the last 48 hours or so. Northwestern State off to a good start, leading 2 0. Alex Brady is the third reliever, make it the second reliever for. LSU today replacing Blake Money. 12th appearance, a 1 0 record, a 6 and 3 quarters ERA, 8 innings, 7 hits, 8 walks, four, uh, 8 strikeouts, 4 walks for this left hander. Last time out for Brady, he worked uh, May 3rd against the Southern Jaguars, uh, worked two thirds of an inning, didn't, didn't give up anything. Before that, he pitched uh, one inning against the Arkansas Razorbacks, so one inning scoreless. No hit, struck out one, so decent numbers for Brady, other than really just had the one outing that kind of, uh, like basically had two outings out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11 appearances. Two out of the 11 have been not good and it kind of skewed his ERA. Other than that, he's done the job. Kunert, the first hitter. And that's downstairs.
Brady levels the count. Lenny Kunert, 5, 870 pounds. I think he lifts himself, lists himself at those numbers. The former Marucci White Sox player and uh, started off his career as a infielder and has played mostly outfield throughout his Northwestern State career. Brady's 3-1 pitch is elevated. That's the second walk from the three LSU pitchers. Here's Skinner, who drew a base on balls last time. That was against the starter, Helmers, who went two innings. Money went one. The Demons have scored a run apiece on the first two LSU pitchers. A home run by Elkins in the second and an RBI single by Elkins in the third. The 0 1 to Skinner. Eighty one mile an hour slider from Brady. Northwestern State had played twenty eight consecutive Southland Conference games before this non conference tilt. Brady is missing upstairs. Peyton Davis is on deck. Helped him out that time. Chased that fastball up out of the zone. That was 86 up high and tight. Skinner. Overly aggressive, the catcher out of Texas. Skinner out of uh, Cypress, Texas, went to Blinn Junior College, which is in Brenham, Texas, the home of Blue Bell Ice Cream. You've told me on more than one occasion that the trip to the Bluebell factory where they had free ice cream was one of the biggest moments in your life. It, top 10, I was happened to be there the day of the 100th anniversary of Bluebell ice cream about 10 years ago or so. Happened to be in the area and uh, stumbled across the festival that was the 100 year anniversary that weekend at Bluebell ice cream. That's ripped into left center field. Cunard is on his way to third. He'll make it without a throw. The throw comes back to the middle bag. And these demons have had some good swings against all three LSU pitchers. Yeah, this is a good good hack right back up the middle by Skinner on the 2-2. And nice job by DiGiacomo in center field. Sometimes, it's, you know, the outfielders can throw the wrong base. He quickly turned around and fired a good one in the second. To make sure Skinner could move up. But the Demons have something going. First and third and no outs. And a chance to increase the lead. 14 batters have come to the plate. Six of them have base hits. That's over a 400 average so far. Peyton Davis, three home runs, seven doubles on the year. So you does have some some pop. Helmer struck him out in the second inning. And he was the last batter that Helmer's faced.
Helmers gave up two hits. Now we're going to have a pitch and change. In two innings, a walk and a couple of strikeouts. Money gave up three hits. And that will be the end of Alex Brady's day. Michael Fowler has come out of the bullpen for LSU. So Paul Maneri hoping to uh, find a pitcher who can be effective here. It's 2-0 Northwestern State leading and batting in the fourth. They say we're young and we don't know. We won't find out until we grow. Well, I don't know if all that's true. Cause you got me and baby, I got you. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. In business, it's never just another day. It's the big sale or the big presentation, the day where everything goes right, or the one where nothing does. With Comcast Business, you get the network that can deliver gig speeds to the most businesses and advanced cybersecurity to protect every device on it, all backed by a dedicated team 24-7. Every day in business is a big day. We'll keep you ready for what's next. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. The lean freshman from Trustville, Alabama, Michael Fowler, has replaced Alex Brady. He's the third reliever already for the Tigers. No record, an ERA of seven, 14 innings, 12 hits allowed, 11 strikeouts, eight walks. And this is his 12th appearance of the of the year. Well, Palmineri going with a right-handed power arm, hard breaking ball, trying to get the strikeout here on Peyton Davis uh, with a runner at third, less than two outs. So that's why they're bringing in Fowler. He last pitched uh, as you, uh, against La Tech and Southern. Those are the two times he's pitched this uh, month in those two appearances against Southern Louisiana Tech he went two and two thirds innings gave up three hits four runs all of them earned and his ERA climbed uh, up to 707 So Fowler inherits runners on the corners after Cunert walked and Skinner singled him to third. The middle infielders are back looking for a double play. Morgan is holding a runner at first and Doty is even with the bag at third in the base path. A quick strike to Davis. See, in that situation, Davis, who's got 42 strikeouts and 108 at bats, that's almost a 40% average. 40% of the time he strikes out. He got a first pitch fastball right down the middle. He's got to be swinging on that with a runner at third. Even if he hits into a double play, you're going to get a run home if you're the Demons. And instead, he took the probably the best pitch he's going to see, and now he's, you know, working from behind. Michael Fowler's best performance of the year came back on March the 5th, Lynn. He went four innings against Oral Roberts, only gave up one hit, no walk, struck out two. 47 pitches, which is a season high in that outing. There's the breaking ball. Jake Hayes is on deck. Davis had to protect the plate. Nobody out. Runners at third and first. Cunert and Skinner. Go, go, go. 
A cold third strike. And Ronnie, in retrospect, you were absolutely correct. The first pitch he saw was by far the most hittable. Yeah, this is a guy who strikes out a bunch. Palmineri knew the, the the numbers and made the change, and it was the right one. Went got the right-handed power arm with a good breaking ball, and that's the kryptonite for Peyton Davis. And now, Coach Maneri having a word with his infield. This is more about the first and third situation than it is anything to do with Michael Fowler. They want to discuss how to handle any sort of steal or hit and run situation. Jake Hayes has been to the plate once. He was the first batter that Blake Money faced. And Money struck him out. Even though Hayes has not been much of a factor offensively at the bottom of the order, he has been really good with runners in scoring position. He's hitting 410 with runners in scoring wow. position, and that leads Northwestern. It's a bit odd for a guy hitting 271, which for Northwestern is a very respectable average. Right. It's about 50 points higher than their team average. So, yeah, you can. He's been Mr. Clutch. Fowler backs him away. A walk, a, a base hit, and a strikeout. In the inning, the first two batters faced Alex Brady. The strikeout was recorded by Michael Fowler. He'd like to get another one here. Two and oh. JK is trying to reach base for the 17th consecutive game. Second on the team in that category. Right here, the Demon should probably have the take on all the way. 3 0. Another base on balls. Fowler has faced two hitters. He has struck out one and walked one. Cunard at third, Skinner at second, Hayes on first. Here's Fontenot, who's two for two at the top of the order. And Fontenot has now reached base 20 consecutive games, so you got the hottest hitter for the Demons right now at the plate, an opportunity to really open this game up. Fontenot has not had much success with the bases loaded. He's hitting well under 200 in these situations. Larson Fontenot went to Santa High School, which is about 25 minutes away from Alex Box Stadium. A lot of greats have come out of that school, including a couple of top former Tigers, Andy Sheets and Jason Williams, two of the all-time best shortstops in LSU history. Both came out of Santa Mar. Where yes. are the strikes? Michael Fowler is asking himself that. 2-0 after walking Hayes. Six straight balls by Fowler. I like your Ben Franklin glasses. Well, they're old readers, Lynn. I had to finally give in. Ooh, that one almost got him. That's seven balls in a row. And he's a pitch away from walking in a run. Nobody is warming up in the LSU bullpen. Ball four, that's eight straight out of the strike zone. And LSU walks in the third run of the game. I wonder if the Tigers are going to have to probably get somebody up and tossing Lynn because they've already taken a mound visit. And he's thrown eight balls in a row. Sometimes pitchers can get to a point where they can get discombobulated and just not. 
find the zone in a while and LSU could be in trouble. Palmineri goes over to look at that lineup card. That's nine in a row that have missed from Michael Fowler. There is not only nobody warming up, nobody is even in the bullpen. Looks like it's going to be Milas. Theo Milas is going to start tossing, so he'll be the next Tiger. And there's a strike finally. The 1-1 one, one pitch sweeps outside. Stewart hit a laser liner to left his last time up. Got a 1-0 count, jumped on that fastball off money. He's had 50 hits on the year, been most in that category on the team. He takes a strike, he thought about Cutting loose, but didn't do it. It's two balls, two strikes, one out, a run in. The base is loaded for Northwestern. That's a pretty good heater up in the zone. And Stewart swung at what might have been a pitch elevated out of the strike yep, zone, but yeah. it's a big strikeout. 93, the best uh, fastball of the day from a velocity standpoint, but absolutely was helped out that time by Stewart, who would have had a full count with the bases loaded and one out. Instead, he strikes out on a ball way up out of the zone. A breaking pitch to the left handed batter comes inside. Now Tyler Smith not having a big year offensively this season, uh, but has been very good throughout his career. One ball, one strike. Fowler is just a couple of pitches away from minimizing the damage. Ooh, that got him. It sure did. Breaking ball hit him. So a runner has been walked in, and another one has been hit by a pitch in. Fowler overcooks the breaking ball, and that gets him on the bat on the knee on that back leg. So a couple of runs in this inning. They are charged to Alex Brady. Everything else is Fowler's responsibility. Elkins has produced RBI in his last three at bats. He had a home run in the Stephen F. Austin game, and he's had a home run in this game and an RBI single. So this is a hitter who's been really good lately in his last three at bats. Let's see if he can keep it going. Fowler works ahead for the first time. Two quick strikes on Elkins. Ooh. 
Fowler throws a nice breaking pitch. Elkins knew it. He walks away after taking the call third strike. But Northwestern, with only one hit, picks up a couple of runs in the inning. There were three walks and a hit batter. It's 4 nothing Demons over LSU. These are Smile Direct Club aligners. They can turn a smile like this into a smile like this in as little as four to six months for less than $3 a day. Choose Smile. Get started for free at SmileDirectClub.com. Smile Let's talk about teeth straightening. Why does Invisalign cost so much? Smile Direct Club costs 60% less than Invisalign and it's guaranteed for life. Choose Smile. Get started for free at SmileDirectClub.com. Doug. Hey, Limo. How great is it that we get to tell everybody how Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance? So you only pay for what you need. I mean, oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Meow, good evening. <laughs> oh. Meow. <laughs> nope. Oh, what? I'm an emu. <laughs> no, buddy. Buddy, it's a filter. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. The Demons have scored in three of their last four innings. One in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth on just one base hit. And LSU will try to get something started against a new pitcher. This is Andrew Cassio, a sophomore from Spring, Texas. He's only pitched in four previous games, no record, an ERA of nearly 11. Three and a third innings, three hits, three walks, three strikeouts. Well, Casio potentially has a pretty good arm, 90 to 93. Has a very good slider. That's his best. Uh, that's his best pitch. And we'll see what the radar says about Andrew Casio here in his first offering. Went to McLennan Community College before transferring to Northwestern State. Bianco looks at one under his chin. Casio from the stretch without base runners and finds the strike zone. Casio is working ahead now, a ball and two strikes. 91 on that offering. Bianco certainly has been the most versatile Tiger this year. Yeah, he definitely wins the Keith Osick Award for uh, really being able to play just about any position. Keith Osick, a player who played at LSU in the late 80s, 1991 year. The Iron Man game where he played all nine positions, a different position each, each inning. And uh, Drew Bianco can play any of the outfield spots and really any of the infield spots. The only thing he can't do is pitch and catch. Kuhner is chasing it down and gets there in foul territory behind the bullpen mound on the left side. Bianco is 0 for 2. Here's Mitchell Sanford who lined out to right field last time. LSU has a base hit from Thompson and a double by Doty, a little dumper in right field. And that has been it so far. Sanford may be a little tardy on that swing. Sanford, the former high school quarterback. Berwick High, dual threat quarterback, can run around a little bit as well as throw it. And you can see why he was a quarterback every time he throws the ball in the outfield. Has he threw out a runner on Friday night against Alabama in a one-run ball game? He threw out the tying run at the plate. 
Speaking of former quarterbacks who have turned into productive baseball players, I guess that, I guess that 2009 national championship team had the most to relish you than I, than I can recall. What were there, nine former yeah, I quarterbacks? I believe it was nine former starting quarterbacks. Buzzy Idell is claiming he's the best. Well, we tell you what, Buzz today. I'm not going to rag on my uh, my buddy, uh, former my, my co-host on Sports Charts Radio, because Buzzy Heidel, who does a great job on the LSU Radio Network, uh, filling in sometimes, he shot a 72 yesterday at Augusta National. He got to play the where the Masters has played in Georgia. He played yesterday with Mike Hollander, former LSU uh, teammate of his, and, and a now captain. An attorney, right? Yeah, attorney down in in, in uh, Look at the squirrel run, running out on the field. So get your T-shirts ready. If, if it's if, not a possum, but it's close. Bayou Apparel is firing up the presses right now. If LSU comes from behind, down four nothing, look for the Rally Squirrel T-shirts to be at a store near you. Oh, there you go. That's a drive into right center field. It's cut off by the center fielder. Sanford is gambling on his way to second, and he's not going to make it. He never checked up. He never hesitated. He was committed to second base from the get go. And yeah. that was a heck of a throw by Fontenot, the center fielder. Well, it was a good hit by Sanford, but he's thinking two all the way, and he's got a slam on the brakes. Once he makes the turn, he sees the throw come back in. When you decide to go to second, it's because there's a bobble or somebody gets to it slow. That time, Sanford uh, asking Coach Maneri to. To use the headsets, but he was clearly out. H6 on the put out. It was just a, a player trying to make too much happen right there, Lynn. You got to know the situation when you're down four. You know, just hey, station to station. We got to get back in this ball game. Getting in the scoring position right there was not the end all be all spot for their LSU. Fontano did a nice job of tracking it down and then getting his body placed for a throw. And sent it to the shortstop. This will be another try for Fontenot. And that's it. So even though Sanford got a base hit, only three Tigers came to the plate. Four nothing, Northwestern State leading LSU. <laughs> you have Cox home life. So you could see what triggered the porch light. But you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about how a little rain won't stop you from sleeping under the stars. You're thinking by this time next year, she'll be at sleepaway camp with Anna and Sophia. You're not thinking about the front porch. Well, maybe just a little. Stay close to the moments that matter. Cox Home Life will help take care of the rest. My ED was so bad, I was afraid to engage in a relationship. Now I'm super happy with my girlfriend and I'm more confident than I've been in years. Hims makes it simple to find the right ED medication for you all from home. We'll match you with a licensed medical provider. If prescribed, it's delivered to your door in discreet packaging. Ready to get your relationship on track? Get hard or your money back at 4 slash ED. Postseason baseball is not far away. Here are the NCAA tournament preliminary host sites. There are 20 of them. Four will not make the cut, but why do you see uh, these sites? 16 sites will be selected from this group of 20. Of the 20 teams that are listed as potential host sites, seven of them are out of the SEC. And I kind of like this, Lynn. I want you know, sometimes you, you pick up things during a COVID year and they stick. I'm hoping that maybe this sticks where you have the 20 sites announced ahead of time and then a week later you you or a couple weeks later you announce the uh, who the 16 are it kind of builds a little excitement and gives everybody something to shoot for over the next few weeks we will find out on May 30th the sites and the teams involved Theo Millis the freshman from Burnaby British Columbia comes out a 1 0 record, 3.46 ERA, 13 innings in 10 previous appearances. 
12 hits allowed, six strikeouts. He's walked three. Ellis can throw the ball in the 91, 92 range. Millis is covering. That's nicely done between Trey Morgan and Millis. And Camp Sibley is retired. With Morgan at first base, pitchers cannot assume he's not going to get to balls. He's one of the more wide ranging first basemen in the country. And quickly there are two outs as Kate Doty went to his left and then slung it over to Morgan. You see Kuhnert jogging off right there back a couple of years ago. Actually, uh, I guess three seasons now, 2018. He had a home run against LSU in that Corvallis Regional, went three for four. And for a kid that grew up uh, less, you know, 20 minutes away from Tiger Stadium, that, that had to be a big thrill and was as the Demons play very well in that regional and gave LSU a run for their money in that ball game. They actually had a 2-2 lead. A tie. He broke a 2-2 tie with that homer. And, and then LSU came from behind to win. Skinner has been on base twice. He has walked and singled and scored. Two ground ball outs here. On the first two pitches in the fifth. And Millis finds the strike zone two two and one four runs six hits for the demons no runs three hits for LSU Morgan locates it and grabs it and a quick inning for Mellis only six pitches take care of business in the fifth inning we go to the bottom half of the fifth it's Northwestern State for LSU nothing Yeah, give me more cross-eyed. Yes. Crystal, how about like, like that on your face? Yeah. Ooh, that's that's it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you have Cox Home Life, so you could see what triggered the porch light, but you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about how a little rain won't stop you from sleeping under the stars. You're thinking by this time next year, she'll be at sleepaway camp with Anna and Sophia. You're not thinking about the front porch. Well, maybe just a little. Stay close to the moments that matter. Cox Home Life will help take care of the rest. Well, let's take a look at uh, the 11, 12, 13, and 14 teams right now in the Southeastern Conference. And, Ronnie, this is very relevant because the team that finishes 13th and the team that finishes 14th does not make the SEC tournament. Well, and the really neat thing is that LSU and AM play each other and Auburn and Missouri play each other. But the Tigers actually uh, will be 10th at the moment because of the tiebreaker that they have over Kentucky, who they're tied with for the same record. But Auburn and Missouri, I mean, that, that they're playing each other two out of three. And the Aggies, who've been swinging it a little bit better in the last couple of weeks, have everything to play for in College Station against LSU this weekend. And as I read that, those four teams all have a chance to work their way into the tournament. They won't, of course, but uh, all four right now have an opportunity. Jake Wyatt comes to the plate for the first time. He entered the game a couple of innings ago and Malazzo was injured behind the plate. Wyatt is first pitch swinging and sends it to the right side. Peyton Davis gobbles it up for the out. Andrew Cassio. Back for his second inning of relief. And Trey Morgan, who is 0 for 1 with a walk, could extend his hitting streak to 11 games right here.
Casio makes the grab. Morgan is retired. So two quick outs, and we have seen a lot of first pitch swinging in this game. Yeah, Tigers have been getting a lot of fastballs that they've been swinging, but Morgan with a little one hopper back to the mound. How about the year, though, that the freshman is having? 393 is his SEC average for Trey Morgan, who uh, I'm sure will be all over the freshman All American list later on this summer. I've got a question for you which was posed to me in our last broadcast. We were comparing Trey Morgan's freshman year with superstar Todd Walker's freshman year. And the question I got, Ronnie, was uh, somebody was looking back in time and trying to remember. And the, 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 uh, the question was, did Todd Walker actually have 100 hits in his, in his freshman year? I believe he did. Well, let me check that. Check that. I saw this, this this statistic. The thing about Todd that year is he had double-digit homers. He had uh, nearly a around 20 stolen bases, and he hit you know 400 for the year, and played more games. And when I say played more games, played SEC tournament, regionals, you know, uh, and and the SEC tournament was in the Superdome that year. LSU won the SEC championship, won the SEC tournament in the Dome, and then played in a six-team regional at the box. So those extra games came against top-notch pitching and top-notch opponents in postseason. And, what, of course, why your, that's, why, while, he's in, that's yeah. why he's in the College Baseball Hall of Fame and, and his numbers and, retired. And while you're looking that up, um, if I remember correctly, didn't he hit almost 400 as a for his career? Correct. His three-year career. Just a, a tick under. Like 396 maybe. Well, Dylan Cruz goes down on strikes. Andrew Casio has been really good in a couple of innings of work. A three up, three down frame. And we move forward as Cruz can't come up with this one. Northwestern State out in front, 4 nothing over LSU. These are Smile Direct Club aligners. They can turn a smile like this into a smile like this in as little as four to six months for less than $3 a day. Choose Smile. Get started for free at SmileDirectClub.com. Smile Club. Let's talk about teeth straightening. Why does Invisalign cost so much? Smile Direct Club costs 60% less than Invisalign and it's guaranteed for life. Choose Smile. Get started for free at SmileDirectClub.com. Duolingo knows learning a language is hard. So we made it. Fun. Yeah, choose from 40 languages and complete daily goals all in a few minutes a day. Stay motivated with free and effective bite-sized lessons. Ready? Start learning with the world's number one language learning app. Download Duolingo. Northwestern State shutting out LSU and out hitting the Tigers six to three with a variety of relievers working in this game. LSU's pitching rotation has been about the same. Theo Millis has turned in a one two three inning and he's back on the mound for LSU after throwing only six pitches in the last frame. Peyton Davis and Jake Hayes and Larson Fontenot are scheduled to hit for the demons. Jordan Thompson throws it up the line but it's recognized by Trey Morgan and he drifts off catches it and makes the tag. It's got to make an infielder feel pretty good to throw it over to Morgan. Yeah I mean that's. You just throw it anywhere in the area. You know he's going to come up with it. It's you know even the tough throws. It's rare that he if he doesn't pick it or jump up in the air, make a great catch. Hayes is first pitch swinging. Morgan this time tries to stab it on the scoop and could not get it cleanly. I think he had more time than he thought he yep. did. Kind of stabbed at it. Kind of rushed it. He could have broken down, spread his legs, kind of like. Just broken down and stopped. Instead, he kind of runs through the ball. You see, he slaps at it. That time, the 
over aggressiveness of ranging to his right maybe got the best of him. That's an error on the first baseman. Ronnie, I think he could have almost played like that like an outfielder with the ball on the grass and still had time to get yep. a runner at first. But it is an error on Trey Morgan. By the way, I know you've been looking up the numbers on Todd Walker. The <laughs> viewer's question was uh, answered correctly. It, he had 100 hits in his freshman year. Now, we were comparing Morgan's year with Walker's year. Morgan has 74 hits. Todd Walker had 26 more than that in his rookie season. And that's the fewest hits he had in any season. Morgan's going to have to chase this one down. Cuts loose with a throw to third. And everybody is safe. Runners on the corners. As Larson Fontenot hit it to deep short. And the result was an outstanding grab by Thompson, but he threw the ball up the right field line. Third hit of the day for Fontenot. The Santa Mar High product. Morgan could corral it and uh, quickly pounced on it, but Font but nice job by the Demons of running the bases, and now they've got an opportunity to tack on some more with the leading hitter on the team. So that's a base hit and a throwing error. Runners on the corners. Ball one to Dante Stewart. Who has bounced into a double play single and struck out. So going back to the, the Todd Walker conversation. You know you just forget because it's been almost 30 years uh, how great he was. He had 100 hits in all three years that he was at LSU 92 93 94 100 hits. Worst year he had was 393 he hit double digit homers every year include 22 as a sophomore and he could run a little bit always had a number of stolen bases and a good base runner stole bases at a high average. But going back to that freshman year that kind of came out of nowhere he Keon Cook was the guy who was supposed to play second base that year for for LSU expected him to be the starter and Todd had amazing fall hit almost 500 in the fall and then. The rest is history went on to be a college baseball Hall of Famer. And I, but the, the fact that we're just having the conversation about Trey Morgan being even in that class tells you how good he is. Now Morgan may not get the number of games that Todd played this freshman year because he Todd played 70 games I believe his freshman year. Morgan's well as good as Morgan has been as effective as he's been offensively to show you the difference between a great year and a super super great year out of Walker he has to hit has to hit 500 in his next 50 at bats to catch Walker. <laughs> well meanwhile runners occupy every base as Stewart draws a base on balls. Now the Northwestern State Demons Lynn two games above 500 getting uh, kind of ready for the Southland Conference Tournament which is going to be about 45 minutes down the road at Southeastern and Hammond next week. Hasn't played a midweek game in a while and they have been on fire today came in only batting under 230 as a team offensively but today they have. Swung it well seven hits so far and looking for more. And the, the uh, Tigers have been limited to three base hits. Off of. Uh, Three pitchers who don't throw a lot for Northwestern State. The Demons who come in hitting in the 220 range are hitting over 300 tonight. 304, 7 for 23 in this ballgame. I think that might have got him up. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Run's going to score. I thought it hit the batter too, but evidently not. Take a peek. Melis spikes it and yep it went right by him right by Smith. And so that's a wild pitch. Three of the runs 
have been via a walk with the bases loaded, a hit batter with the bases loaded, and a wild pitch with the bases loaded. LSU now with the infield in, they can ill afford to give up any more. Down five. This game has maybe this is an inappropriate description considering all the damaging water, but LSU is playing like it's underwater so far tonight. Just not much has gone right. No. Only three hits, two errors, some walks, and wild pitches, some hit batters. Interestingly enough, Northwestern is only one for six with runners in scoring position. Tyler Smith he is 0 for 2, but he was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. LSU, this was supposed to be the, you know, kind of a celebration, right? The last uh, regular season home game for the Tigers. And Paul Maneri is going to pick up career win 1,500 at home. Tigers are going to have to rally in a big way if that's all going to happen. And it looks like Andrew Casio is going to come back out and pitch in the bottom of this inning. He has been really good through a couple of innings in relief. Millis to the plate. This ball is hit well. Cruz is backing up as deep as he can. He's on the dirt and he gets there for the out. The runner from third tags. The runner from second tags and Northwestern adds another run on a very deep sacrifice fly by Tyler Smith. Boy, Tyler Smith just missed running that ball out of the ballpark. He hit it a ton. You see Cruz kind of playing in a little bit and he went back to go get it. And that's an easy jog tag and the demons just continue to tack on the runs. They've now scored in four of the six innings offensively. Millis misses upstairs to Jeffrey Elkins. He's had a good day. He has homered and driven in a run with a base hit. He also has struck out. Check swing tapper to the left side. This will not be an easy play. Morgan dives for it and hangs on to catch the throw from Kate Doty. But the inning is over and Northwestern adds a couple of runs in the sixth inning. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Northwestern State six. LSU nothing. We didn't just build another hybrid. We built a hard charging 37 mile per gallon turbo hybrid with the range and power to find your next story. Wherever it might be. The 2021 Sorento Turbo Hybrid, the world's first storytelling machine. So the first time we received Home Chef, I absolutely loved it. It's amazing, it's convenient, it shows up at your door. The oven ready meals are extremely simple. Um, they, everything comes in one pan, you put all the ingredients in it, put it in the oven and life is easy. <laughs> Cooking is one of our passions, knowing that we could get it to our house and don't have to go to the grocery store as often, you know, makes us happy and it's great. <laughs> I don't see a rainbow in that picture, but I do see some more sunshine advancing on this part of Louisiana, and that is indeed good news. It may be temporary, but uh, still it's good to see old soul out right now. Well, I lost whatever bet you and I would have made partner uh, earlier today if you'd have told me we'd have started this game at five o'clock and gotten all nine innings in without a, a delay because it did not look good. I think we actually started the game with a little bit of a light mist. A little maybe even a little drizzle going which you usually don't do. But uh, it worked out in the end. 
Casio working to Dugas. Gavin has walked twice. Six runs, seven hits for the visitors. No runs, three hits, two errors for LSU. Dugas with that wide stance. And he chops a routine ground ball to Sibley. Out at first base. Dugas hustling down the line, but Sibley able to make the play. Casio has done a very nice job in relief. He's only allowed one base runner. And he has faced the minimum number of Tigers. And Casio, we were told the slider, when he can throw strikes, the slider is uh, potentially a plus slider. Doty had a bloop double in right field last time, and that's good enough to move his hitting streak to four games and his on base streak to 15. Kate is one for two. The other Tigers who have base hits Jordan Thompson and Mitchell Sanford. De Giacomo is on deck. That's very nicely done by the Northwestern catcher, Marshall Skinner. That's about as sure handed as you can play that pop up. That, that was really nice because you got a little bit of the shadows going on. See, you got the shadows behind home plate, unfamiliar territory, and he handled it with no problem. And Kay Doty, a very good uh, fastball hitter up in the zone. Just uh, was a little tardy on that one. So two outs, and here is to Giacomo, who has bounced out and struck out. And Giacomo, after the two bombs, his first two of the year against Alabama on Sunday hitting hitting in the five hole in the middle of the lineup trying to split up those right handed batters well he actually has batted in the cleanup spot a few times this year not well, not because of his well, home we, run power and we, but and it seemed ridiculous at the time that he was hitting in the cleanup spot but, hey, but he, he was delivering Man base hits too. coach Maneri knew something we didn't as far as uh, the potential power in there. And a 400 plus foot home run to right field on Sunday and then fouled that up with a wall scraper to left later on. Casio grabs it. The first baseman is shading his eyes, but he makes the catch. Casio, in three innings of work, has faced only nine hitters. Northwestern, six. LSU, nothing on the SEC ESPN network. Sing along. At least you can watch it on the best. Thumbs up, thumbs up, elbows back. Cox Internet, number one for streaming video, according to Nielsen data. What's up, y'all? I'm Cody Rigsby. I'm going to show you a fun little circuit that you might see in class. We're going to start with some forward lunges. You can do this with weights or without. Just give me your best. In three, two, one. Bring those weights up to your shoulder. Squeeze your butt, rib cage down, press into the sky. Drop those weights in three, two, and one. Let's drop those weights. I'm Cody Rigsby, and you can unlock Bike Boot Camp and so much more on Peloton. With Northwestern State University leading 6 0 over LSU, Trent Wittmeyer comes out of the bullpen for the Tigers. So he replaces Millis, who replaced Fowler, who replaced Brady, who replaced Money, who replaced Helmers. Bittmeyer had a nice senior day on the 
Sunday. We'll see the last time he pitched was back on on that Sunday against Alabama. He went one in and gave up one hit, no runs. This is his 16th appearance of the year. Fastball anywhere from you know 88 to 91 miles an hour. But uh, when he's had his best moments as a Tiger a couple seasons ago, he really had that hard slider going where it went on. He would throw it three, four times in a row. Two balls and no strikes. He misses to Cam Sibley, who has struck out, fly to right, and grounded first baseman to pitcher covering. Three and oh. Might have been a generous strike. The LSU pitchers have walked four today. Let me rework those numbers at least four. There's a swinging strike. Make it five walks. Bittmeyer comes all the nice way back job. after falling behind 3 and 0. Oh. How about that? You don't see that very often. Fall behind 3 0 oh and come back with a strikeout. This was his best fastball, nothing fancy, just 91, probably on that borderline ball strike part up in the zone. And you see the frustration as he knew he chased, uh, Sibley knew he chased one. Lenny Kuhnert is 0 for 2. He has walked and scored, and twice he has grounded out, each time to the corners. takes care right. of business that time a bit quicker. Yeah he didn't mess around right I guess after he just need to get a few of those balls out of his system you know the fall behind 3 0 ever since then he's been uh, locked in and he dispatched of Lenny Kunert pretty easily. He has strike a, out the side here. He has a bit of a short arm delivery doesn't he. Well he just uh, everything's hard right he attacks you. Fastball, hard breaking ball. There's not a change up in there. There's not anything real slow curve. Just a power arm. Skinner has walked, singled, and scored, and fouled out to Morgan. Additionally, throws a lot of strikes. The LSU has been a bit generous with walks and hit batters, especially with the bases loaded and a couple of errors. 12. Well, only three hits, though, Ronnie, by this Tiger attack, which uh, blistered the ball for the most part against Alabama. Isn't it crazy how the, the game of baseball, uh, there's so little carryover sometimes from one game to the next. And LSU had 16 hits just less than 48 hours ago. And then against uh, a number of Alabama arms that were 90 plus, here they are today facing different demon pitchers. And they only have uh, only third, only three hits. And LSU has yet to ride one out of the ballpark today with a very favorable wind blowing out toward left. That's something the Tigers did seven times against Alabama pitchers. Yep. Vittmeyer strikes that, out the side. That's the best inning of work. 
by an LSU pitcher so far. So let's look at Wittmeyer take care of business. 91 mile an hour fastball right there then gets a couple of good sliders from Wittmeyer the senior out of Pittsburgh Pennsylvania having his own special senior day here against the Demons. Our kids look up to us. Our choices matter. I put my whole heart into teaching and parenting. So when I choose products, I want them to care just as much as I do. Grove helps me by making sustainable choices easy. They have all the best natural brands and they're going plastic free by 2025, which is amazing. With Grove, every product I use is good for my family and good for the planet. Looking for dinner made easy? Move over meal prep and make way for pre-chopped and pre-portioned ingredients. Hit the road hard to follow recipes and say hello to easy breezy meals. Peace out pile of dishes and welcome easy cleanup. Well, hello there, Home Chef. Home Chef oven ready meals. Pre-chopped and pre-portioned recipes without the prep or mess. Get $90 off your first month at homechef.com. Home Chef, delicious meat simple. If you're a Northwestern fan, you like what you see. If you're a Tiger fan, you're hoping that the offense starts collecting some productivity. Andrew Cassio has been brilliant in relief for Northwestern State. He has thrown three innings and faced nine batters. LSU has a base hit off of him. But Mitchell Sanford in trying to stretch it into a double was thrown out at second base. Since then, Casio has retired seven in a row. He falls behind Drew Bianco, two balls and no strikes. Bianco has popped up to the first baseman, and he was the first batter that Casio faced in the fourth inning. Two CBA, balls on a strike. See Bianco taking that 2 0 pitch right down the middle. And that's kind of what LSU's got to do right now. They're down too many runs. Sure. They're down six runs. So you can't just go up there hacking, even though it's a hitter's count. You got to try to get some base runners via the walk. Maybe get the Casio out of the game. Get a different reliever in there. Take your chances with the next guy. Not a lot of times can base hits alone overcome a 6 0 deficit. Yeah. Especially leadoff walks. They really start rallies for you if Bianco can draw a walk here. Here's the 3 1 pitch. And he did draw a base on balls. So we'll see if that's a start for LSU. By the way, Casio is in a place he's never been before. This is the most he has ever pitched in a game. Prior to this, the most he had ever worked in a game was an inning and a third. Saw the five walks today by Northwestern State pitching, but the Tigers haven't to this point been able to take advantage of that. Sanford had a base hit in the fourth. He also lined to right. He stung one that was caught in the second inning. And we will have a conference. I think we'll have on more the than a conference. I think going to see a pitch and change possibly. I mean, he looks the last misses have been way out of the zone and he even took like a deep breath like he was almost a little tired after that last pitch. Micah Barron's is in the dug uh, the uh, bullpen for Northwestern. Let's check some other SEC scores, shall we? Georgia leads Georgia Tech in the sixth inning two to one. Kentucky is out in front of Tennessee Tech five to four in the fourth. Tennessee five Belmont two that's in the bottom of the fifth. All of these games uh, by the way are at home for SEC schools. Kansas is in front of Missouri four to two that's in the third. Alabama uh, rather Auburn leads uh, North Alabama seven to four in the third. South Carolina one Appalachian State nothing in the fifth. Mississippi State has a couple of early runs against Jacksonville State. That's in the second inning. Ole Miss is trailing UT Martin in the second inning. Three nothing. 
And Vanderbilt in the second inning has a three to one lead over Florida International. You're up to date in the SEC. Well Bobby Barbier stayed with his right hander Casio. He's got a couple guys up you know uh, in the bullpen. Now there's a left hander getting ready as well. Lefty tossing down there is Cameron Taylor at the moment. A few minutes ago that was uh, Michael Barron's was also up throwing. Here's the two one pitch. Off the mark three and one. You know, the demons are in a situation Lynn where all right great they've got a 6 0 lead against the Tigers but they're they can't just do whatever to you know as far as to win this game they've got four games they got four games coming up this weekend to Northwestern State and so you know they're a little tapped out pitching wise and they've got to manage their bullpen they've got Texas A&M Corpus Christi at home that's May 20th, 21st, and 22nd, yeah. 6 30, 2 o'clock, and 1 o'clock are the game times in Natchitoches. That's Thursday, two Friday, and one Saturday. Today's Tuesday. So, you know, you don't want to really burn your, your, your front line bullpen too much for the weekend. But isn't it interesting how, when you say front line people, and we haven't seen any from either side yet, and yet only three hits for LSU and seven for Northwestern. Jordan Thompson has a chance to heat the rally. He has singled and flied to center. LSU is 0 for 3 today with runners in scoring position. This is the fourth opportunity. Bianco and Sanford have walked. Wyeth is on deck. Let's see if Thompson can keep this thing going. Casio, who had pitched brilliantly in the first three innings of relief, having some difficulty here in inning number four. Ground ball left side. Scoop by the shortstop out at first. A very high throw. Runner's going to try to come to the plate. Here's the throw. Safe on an aggressive effort by Bianco. LSU gets on the board. Well, the Tigers will take it. They needed a to somehow get a run in. Right here, Northwestern State second baseman Stewart try overthrows first, just sails it. Fortunately for the Demons, it doesn't go in the dugout, and they think they've got a chance at the plate. And you see Drew Bianco coming in like Superman on his belly right there, the belly flop Superman style to get the get the run in. And we will have another pitcher coming in for Northwestern State as LSU without benefit of a base hit has a run here in the seventh. We'll be back in a moment. Six to one Northwestern State leading LSU on the SEC ESPN Network. How can I tell you? That I love you, I love, love you, but I can't think of right words to say. I long to tell you that I'm always thinking of you. A tootie ta, a tootie ta, a tootie ta ta. A tootie ta, a tootie ta, a tootie ta ta. Thumbs up. Elbows back. Elbows back. A tootie ta, a tootie ta, a tootie ta ta. Not the best sing along. At least you can watch it on the best. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Elbows back. Cox Internet, number one for streaming video, according to Nielsen data. 
Andrew Cassio has been lifted after three and a third. Very nice innings of relief. And Cameron Taylor, the big left-hander, is on here in the bottom of the seventh inning. You see Taylor, 12 innings so far this year. This is the lefty out of Airline High School up in Bossier City near Shreveport. Eight hits allowed. 11 Ks and four walks. So this will be a big thrill for him here in his ninth appearance. We pitching at the box. The junior. He doesn't quite have the Peyton Graham look with those uh, pants, but he's pretty close. <laughs> Not a lot of length to those pants. Those stop right at the knees. And the socks don't come up to meet the pants. Now Peyton Graham looked like he was wearing long basketball shorts. Uh, Cameron Taylor last pitched uh, on the 16th against at Stephen F. Austin actually threw a couple of times in that series and did well. He went one inning and two inning combined for three innings of work against uh, Stephen F. Austin and did not give up a hit or run at four strikeouts in three innings. Zach Arnold is going to bat for Jake Wyeth. So this will be the third hitter in the number nine position for LSU. Malazzo got one at bat before he was injured. Wyeth got an at bat and now Arnold. LSU with a run home, a runner at first base, and Jordan Thompson on the fielder's choice. A run scored on a throwing error by the second baseman, Dante Stewart. LSU's order rolls over after Arnold. It'll be the top with Morgan. If the Tigers stay out of the double play, Arnold is played as a pull hitter. On the infield at least. The second baseman is almost pulled over on the shortstop side. There you see it. So they expect Arnold to pull the ball on the infield and there's a huge gap 90 feet on the right side. Arnold pulls it and gets it by the shortstop on the backhand side, a pinch hit, base hit. So he beat the shift, did Arnold, and the Tigers have two aboard. That's the first base hit for LSU since the fourth inning. Well, Zach Arnold has been swinging a decent bat the last week or so. Remember last week, it was a week ago today against Louisiana Tech, he had three hits coming off the bench. In that ball game. Here's Morgan. Morgan has a 10 game hitting streak in jeopardy. He has Grounded out to second, walked and grounded out to the pitcher. But he has risen to the occasion many times in situations like these this year. Ball one as it sweeps wide. A right hander. He is warming up quickly for Northwestern. Cameron Taylor on the mound, 86 to 88 is his range with the fastball. There was a changeup and a curveball. Curveball is mostly the left-handers. That was an 88 mile an hour fastball that he spiked right there. Barons looks like he's more than ready to go down there in the bullpen. He's been up for a while. The Demons need him. 
Montenot coming on quickly and he gets there to make the one handed catch. That's the second out of the inning as Trey Morgan walks back to the bench 0 for 3 tonight. Well, we'll see if Morgan maybe gets one more at bat with a chance to extend his streak, but just kind of hit that one right off the end of the bat. Didn't get good contact. Usually when Morgan has a, a down game, Cruz will have a good game or vice versa. They kind of pick each other up. Let's see if Dylan Cruz can do that here in this case. Like Morgan, Cruz does not have a base hit, and he's got a four-game hitting streak in jeopardy. He has walked, reached on a fielder's choice, and struck out. LSU has broken through in the seventh, but still trails six to one. Gavin Dugas is waiting on deck. Runners at first and second. Cameron Taylor, after surveying the runners, throws a changeup, and Cruz was in front of it. That was a fantastic changeup. Had great arm action, looked just like the fastball. Instead, it was 78 miles an hour down and away. Dylan Cruz out of Longwood, Florida. And a throw away to center field. That one went awry, and both LSU runners move up. That could be huge if Cruz can come through with a base hit. I, I'm not, I don't know why the pickoff, if you're Northwestern State right there in that situation, you're up five runs. I mean, that's a design, that's a called play. A design play and a timing play and uh, just kind of a unnecessary risk. So a throwing error on the pitcher. And LSU's not trying to steal in that situation, I can assure you. Another changeup. Boy, he's thrown two good ones, hasn't he? He has. Must be the breeze he's getting on those kneecaps. You know, it's just helps you just feel nice in rhythm because those are two of the better change-ups we've seen today. And again, it's all about the arm action. He doesn't slow anything down. It all looks exactly like a fastball. He just lets the grip do the work. Cruz hits it deep into right center field. There's a collision by the center fielder against the wall. The ball is rolling back toward the infield. Cruz is going to stop at third base. And LSU picks up a couple of more runs on a wall banger deep to right center field by Dylan Cruz. Well, it's virtually impossible to keep both Morgan and Cruz down, right? Not many offers on the year between those two in the same game. That time went back to the well one too many times. It was an elevated off-speed pitch. And Cruz did a nice job of not trying to pull it. And he's got great power to right center. It's it's uh, That's a sign of an excellent young hitter when you can hit the ball hard the other way. Larson Fontenot never checked up. With his eyes on the prize, that ball got to the wall before he did. It's the first triple of the year for Cruz. It accounts for two runs, and the lead has gone from 6 0 to 6 to 3. Here's Dugas, who can bring LSU to within one with one swing. Two gone, a runner at third. There's that changeup again. Time it was down. That was Kate Doty is on deck, two outs. 
Bianco has scored. So has Thompson. So has Arnold. Another one. Dude has way out in front. That's the book, you know, soft away, hard in, soft away on Dugas. And when you go in, you better go in, in. But he's he's looking to yank it, and he'll, uh, if you can keep that off speed down below the below the belt away with the changeup, that's his, you know, weak spot. The count is level at two. I think he's going to go right back to it. He showed him a fastball right there, bounced it 88 miles an hour, but that's just kind of the you don't want to throw three pitches, th same speed, same location. Now we'll see if he goes right back to the changeup. Oh, trying to go heater again. Three balls, two strikes. Surprised by that pitch call. The, the changeup's been so good. Let's see if he flips it in there with a full count. I don't think you've got a lot to lose by throwing what has been your best pitch tonight. Usually, whatever you throw 2 2, you throw 3 2. We'll see. Went back to it. High fly ball to left center field. It appears there is room. And the center fielder, Larson Fontenot, calls off Cunard and makes the catch. But LSU gets a two run triple off the bat of Dylan Cruz. That was the big blow in the inning. And the Tigers have cut the lead in half. It's Northwestern State six, LSU three. There's a star man waiting in the sky. He'd like to It's right in front of you. Bleu de Chanel. Le Parfum. In business, it's never just another day. It's the big sale or the big presentation. The day where everything goes right. Or the one where nothing does. With Comcast Business, you get the network that can deliver gig speeds to the most businesses and advanced cybersecurity to protect every device on it, all backed by a dedicated team 24-7. Every day in business is a big day. We'll keep you ready for what's next. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. After six scoreless innings, LSU came through with three in the seventh, but still has work to do. Northwestern State leading six to three. And a new battery for the Tigers. Let's start with pitcher Aaron George, a senior from Monroe. He has not logged a lot of innings this year. Yeah, eight and a third innings total uh, through 12 appearances. In those 12 appearances, he's only given up an earned run one time. That came back against uh, UT San Antonio when he appeared in all three games that weekend. He gave up three runs in an inning. Other than that, he has not given up an earned run in any of the other 11 appearances this year. Peyton Davis at the plate. This is pitcher number seven for LSU. Helmers, Money, Brady, Fowler, Millis, Vittmeyer, and now George. There's the little twister for a strike. Grayson Doty getting a chance to play behind the plate today, a senior from Dedham Springs High School, and his final uh, home game is an LSU Tigers so George as well guy who's uh, getting his last opportunity to pitch at the box here's the 2 2 pitch Cruz retreats and there is out number one I always enjoyed you know the old box when uh, when seniors would get their last at bat, usually it was a regional, right? Uh -huh. Whether it was a win or a loss, you know, you have the big crowd and, and people would know, okay, this is so-and-so's last at bat, maybe if it's, even if it's a drafted guy and you get the big ovation and all that, and it was always a big special moment and so many great senior moments over the years. But my all-time favorite was in 1992, Chris Mook, and it's 
We were getting pummeled by Cal State Fullerton, like 11 to nothing, 11 to 1 or something This like is that. in a regional? It's in a regional. We're going to be done. It's over. You know, it's his last at bat. He had a fantastic year that season, was drafted by the Cubs, hit over 300, was a great player. He strikes out his last at bat and just throws the bat into the screen, halfway up the screen, just flips it. I'm done. <laughs> that was his farewell swan song. It was <laughs> hilarious. Bianco goes to one knee to stop it. Nicely done for the second out. Hayes hit it hard, but Bianco was in the right place. So your last appearance, do you recall it? Did the crowd throw <laughs> glazed donuts? <laughs> what was the deal? Uh, gosh, no, we, I didn't have a moment like that. Uh, you didn't? Didn't have the moment, yeah. There was no signs. There did, was no. did Bertman know that that your junior year was going to be your last? Not at the not at the moment that uh, that I that I threw the last time. No. So no, like powdered donuts or anything were thrown out on the field. It only happened to me one time, Lynn. I know you've tried to milk that story, but it happened once. It was on the road at Tennessee, and there was a student section behind uh, behind the dugout, and they. They somebody threw a, a donut onto the field when I went out to go pitch and it happened to me again in Alaska. Somebody threw or, uh, Oreos, which that's my favorite cookie. So, yeah, uh, sure. May or may not have gone and gotten it. Just saying. How about Fontenot? He's got four base hits in this game. Including the last one. On the backside of the infield. He's four for four with a walk with the bases loaded. That's good stuff at the top of the order. Talk about making a memory right there. You know, he's got a lot of friends and family here at the ballpark. Being from nearby Santa Ma. Runner on the move. Doty's throw stole the actually base. hits the runner, which probably kept it from going into center field. Fontenot picks up his team leading 14th stolen bag in 16 attempts this year. Have a day, Larson Fontenot. Good slider by George, but the throw by Doty got him. Bianco, back. Bianco's feet came out from under him. So everybody was in the dirt there. And fortunately for LSU, that ball got a piece of uh, Fontenot. That's a dandy slider. Two outs, a runner in scoring position. Northwestern leads six to three. Now Bianco is going to move over on the shortstop side of the bag. There you see the LSU defensive lineup. The breaking pitch misses away. Three balls and a strike. That's elevated and the inning continues for Tyler Smith. Stewart has been on base three times with a base hit and a couple of walks. And Paul Maneri is going to go to the bullpen. So LSU will bring in the left hander. That's Jacob Hasty. And we will step aside for a moment. Six to three, Northwestern State is leading in the final game of the year in this ballpark. Ball in. On a budget, spend less bacon with the new $1 Your Way menu at Burger King. Featuring a flame grilled bacon cheeseburger and a chicken junior for just a dollar each. Getting more for your buck just hits different. The $1 Your Way menu at Burger King. Your way, way better. What's up, y'all? I'm Cody Rigsby. I'm going to show you a fun little circuit that you might see in class. We're going to start with some forward lunges. You can do this with weights or without. Just give me your best. In three, two, one. Bring those weights up to your shoulder. Squeeze your butt, rib cage down, press into the sky. Drop those weights in three, two, and one. Let's drop those weights. I'm Cody Rigsby, and you can unlock Bike Boot Camp and so much more on Peloton. Sophomore Southpaw, Jacob Hasty out of Keller, Texas. 
He is the new LSU pitcher replacing Aaron George. 18th appearance of the year for Hastie's worked 14 and two thirds given up 11 K's eight walks. He pitched uh, a week ago as the last time out against Louisiana Tech. He went one and two thirds gave up two hits one earned run had no walks two punch outs. We are in the eighth. Northwestern State built a six nothing lead with one in the second and one in the third and two in the fourth and two in the sixth before LSU reached the scoreboard with three in the seventh. There's been one home run in this game and that was off the bat of Jeffrey Elkins in the second inning. That was the first run of the game. Well, Hasty coming in there to face the veteran hitter, the senior Tyler Smith, who had a, about a 370 foot sacrifice fly to right center his last time up. Bringing in Hasty to get him. Hasty will throw that fastball in 89, 92, can run it up on the top end. Tyler Smith waits and takes one upstairs. He has lined out, fly to center, been hit by a pitch with the bases loaded, and had a sacrifice fly last time. So he's 0 for 2 with an RBI. Make it a couple of RBI. Smith lays the bat over his left shoulder pretty flat. In fact, the barrel of it might even dip down below shoulder level right there. Hasty finds the strike zone. 91 on that heater. He and uh, Javen Coleman are the two hardest throwing left handers. On LSU's roster, we've seen Coleman, I think, touching. I know he's hit some 93s. He may even hit a 94 at some point, but. The breaking ball misses. LSU will be on the road at Texas A&M Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Northwestern will be closing out its Southland Conference schedule against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. May 20th at 6.30. Chop up the middle. Bianco's going to have to hurry and throws it into the dirt, and it's plucked by Morgan. Well done by Bianco and Morgan. That's an excellent play. Well, I thought he was safe, uh, you know, Visually, and Northwestern State's going to ask for they're, they're going to challenge this. You get two challenges per game, and they're going to ask for a replay here. Game times in Natchitoches: 6:30 on Thursday, then a two o'clock doubleheader on Friday, and a 1 p.m. single game on Saturday. <laughs> You make the call at home. Looks safe to me. Watch the foot right there. Oh, yeah. Clearly safe. Yeah. This should not take long. Now, what's what I'm what I'm curious about is I, the runner from third was about halfway down the line when the play was made at first. What happens there? Do they assume that he's going to score and they give him the, the base, or does he have to stay at third if he's not quite to the back? I think we're going to find out play. shortly. See, that's part of the replay challenge thing that I don't know. It's still new. There's some, new, some, some little kinks in there. There are circumstances where the umpires can make a placement based on what they think would have happened. We'll see if it applies to this. 
Tyler Smith, who's over there at first base, had a nice, nice career so far for the Demons, you know, as a senior. Numbers offensively this year haven't been as good, been banged up a little bit, but back in 2019, Lynn, he had three home runs in a game against Arkansas when they knocked off number eight, Arkansas. That was one of the best moments of his Demon career. I'm not quite sure why this is taking so long. Here we go. Let's see if they award. They're going to put the runner back and okay. it'll be a base hit. And and that's that's what the call should be. I mean, he was safe clearly, but unfortunately for the Demons, they do not get the run. You know, the, the base runner hadn't reached home. OK, so he's safe. And then watch watch Morgan sells it real good. And then there's the runner at third and uh, but Morgan had already flipped it and started jogging off. So it was going to be a close play at the plate had Morgan fielded and turned and thrown home. It would have been bang bang. So I'm assuming that Smith was given a base hit. Is that right? It is. So the bases are full of demons with two outs and here is Elkins. He has homered and also driven in a run with a single. He has struck out and grounded out to Doty at third. Stee right from Hasty. Here comes the 0-2. Hasty tried to hit that outside corner with a breaking ball. It stayed wide. Six runs, nine hits, two errors for NSU. Three runs, five hits, two errors for LSU. Fontenot, Stewart, and Smith are aboard with two gone. The one-two pitch from Jacob Hasty. Swing and a miss. Hasty comes back to get Elkins on strikes. Well, that was a big, big strikeout right there. Lynn gives LSU a chance here in the eighth and ninth. Six to three, Northwestern State leads. The bottom of the eighth is straight ahead. Look at the way, so you see there's a strawberry in there. But look at the way that the crust, like the graham cracker crust is like sprinkled on it. A piece of art. Sonic cheesecake glass. This is really good mouth art. Yeah. Geico's whole 15 minutes thing, <laughs> that came from me. My first idea was in one quarter of an hour, your savings will tower. But that's not catchy. So I thought 15 minutes, 15% serendipity. Geico. We approach the gloaming here in Baton Rouge. A most unlikely game being played considering all of the flooding rain that has fallen in these parts over the last 48 hours. Drayton Brown, a freshman out of Nacogdoches, Texas, is on the mound now for Northwestern State. 16 appearances, or this will be number 16. Two wins, two losses, and a really good ERA, 1.89. 38 innings, only 22 hits allowed, 40 strikeouts. 13 walks. This is one of their best, Drayton Brown. And how about this, Lynn? He's only a freshman. 6'3", 215 pounder. Went to Hallsville High School in Nacogdoches, Texas, and he plays college baseball in Natchitoches, Louisiana. So he's got, that's got to be easy for forward in your mail, huh? That's got to get a little confusing. Doty has doubled in three at bats. Can anybody get to this in foul ground? Yes, he did. That's a heck of a catch by the right fielder. That is a tremendous catch. It looked like that ball was going to elude everybody. Watch Tyler Smith go get this one. 
That was a very difficult uh, catch considering he had to run over part of the mound. Had to run over part of the uh, bullpen mound. And when you're an opponent and you don't really know the uh, landscape of that bullpen area, oftentimes it can be pretty tricky, but he maneuvered it very well. The Giacomo swings and misses. LSU, I think, the helping these demon pitchers today, expanding the strike zone quite a bit. Swinging at a lot of pitches that are borderline ball strike or even out of the zone. Drayton Brown, 87 and 90 miles an hour is usually where he lives. You saw that last pitch was 89. Has an excellent high spin curveball to go along with the changeup. The Giacomo reaches out to just spoil that pitch. It looked like an off speed pitch. Yeah, he went changeup 75 mile an hour, about 14 miles per hour less than the fastball. A great freshman year he has had. Nobody can get to this on the right side. Great Brown threw one time over the weekend against uh, Stephen F. Austin, worked three innings, didn't give up any hits, didn't walk anybody, struck out one. Pretty good work. Only 27 pitches in three innings against the Lumberjacks. Northwestern has had very little success in a lot of recent games against LSU. This would be a huge victory on the road for the Demons. And the Giacomo cannot pull the trigger on a pitch that got a lot of the plate. All right here, Giacomo must be looking for something else. Gets the fastball. Thinks it's a little off the plate and down. It was borderline, but zone's been a little bit big all day. Just a hair for both teams. Tigers have only five base hits on the evening and hitting less than 200 as a team. Great and Brown five saves on the year on the mound for the Demons. He's working to Bianco at 0 and 2. And the 756 is right on time. Northwestern leading six to three over LSU. Bianco timed that one up. But he pulled it foul. LSU spotted Northwestern too much early. One in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, two in the sixth. Came back with three in the seventh. Bianco lifts it to left field. There appears to be room for Kuhner. He's retreating a couple of steps, but he's got it. And it's a one, two, three inning for one of the ace relievers on this demon staff. The ninth inning is straight ahead on the SEC ESPN network with NSU leading six to three. T-Mobile is the leader in 5G. We also believe in putting people first by treating them right. So we're upping the benefits without upping the price. Introducing Magenta Max. Now with unlimited premium data that can't slow down based on how much smartphone data you use. Plus, get Netflix on us and taxes and fees included. You won't find this with the other guys. In fact, you'll pay more and get less. Right now, pay zero cost to switch. And bring your phone, we'll pay it off. 
only at T-Mobile. Oh, I've travelled all over, telling folks they could save by bundling home and car insurance. But here's the real secret. Eye contact. We just had a moment. Geico. Six to three, Northwestern State in the ninth. Making a bid for an upset over LSU. Jacob Hesty, uh, Hasty back out on the mound to try to keep NSU at six. Cam Sibley, the shortstop, takes a pitch upstairs. Hasty faced six batters in the ninth or the eighth, but managed to work out of trouble. He got that one in just above the hands, and Sibley fouls it away. He has struck out, fly to right, bounced out to the right side, and struck out again. This is the first time Sibley has faced Hasty. And the fourth pitcher he has seen tonight from LSU. That's right down the middle for a strike. Coming up in the ninth inning, the bottom of the frame, Sanford, Thompson, and Doty. Hasty works that one in over the inside edge. That's a good pitch. Boy, he absolutely, absolutely fooled him. That was a, 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 the best breaking ball we've seen from Hasty, and Sibley knew it. Look, right here, he didn't even have to have to wait. He knew that's a good one. Tip your cap. Caught the inside corner. There's a lefty lefty curveball. That one started almost behind Sibley and broke in right on the edge. That breaking ball stays away from the right handed batter. Lenny Kunert, who is 0 for 3. He has not had the ball out of the infield, but he did walk and score in the fourth. Six runs, nine hits, a couple of bobbles for Northwestern, make it 10 hits. Cunard drives one past Doty, and he's at first base with one out. LSU with three runs, five hits, and two errors. Cunard right here, sitting on that fastball, gets a 92 mile an hour heater down and in, and just Drops the barrel on it. On the Live Oak Eagle now come out of the game. He'll get pitch run four. You see the big smile on his face. He's got lots of fans in the stands watching him here at the park. Jacob Farrell, a freshman, is the pinch runner at first base. One out, one on for Skinner. Marshall Skinner, one for three tonight. He walked his first time. He singled and scored. That is fouled out and struck out, and he cracks one into right, a base hit. Northwestern State has been aggressive at the plate. They've been swinging at a lot of pitches early in the count. Yeah, attacking the fastball early in the count, which is always a always a good approach because let's face it, not many people can hit really good breaking balls, you know. And uh, not to mention when you get to a point where you're one two or two two, you're not sure. So there's that slight hesitation. Whereas if you just go up there and pick a pitch out, say, hey, I'm a, on one of the first two pitches. I'm gonna sit fastball and take your hack. It, it helps your uh, Helps you batting average. Statistically, batting averages plummet dramatically when the first pitch is a strike. Yep. 
That's on every level. Davis is 0 for 4. Northwestern State now up to 11 base hits in this game. This is a team that was hitting below 230 for the season coming into today. And they are having quite the day offensively. It's contagious. 10 of those 11 have been singles. The exception was Elkins' home run in the second inning. I don't know what the statistic is, but when you get double digit hits and one of, and at least one of those hits is a homer, I would be willing to bet that you win the game probably 80% of the time. Or maybe more than that. Northwestern was averaging only seven hits a game coming into this one. And there is number 12. And a run will score, and that's a big run for the Demons. Back to back to back singles by Kunert, Skinner, and Davis, the latter producing the RBI. Not a bad pitch by Hasty. It was uh, kind of below the knee. But the big fella Davis just dropped the barrel on it. Sent it from. Uh, from where it came right back up the middle. Paul Maneri's got to be a little bit surprised at, at how well the Demons have, uh, have fared against mostly young pitching today. This apparently is Hasty's game to finish. Jake Hayes at the bottom of the order has struck out walked reached on an error and scored and bounced out. Infield at double play depth two on one in another pitch inside. Northwestern has five more hits in this game than they've averaged per game this year. They've got a dozen base hits, three of them in this inning consecutively. Cunert, Skinner, and Davis. Three hits in a row, and now Hasty, probably a little frustrated. Going to have to really double, triple his concentration here. This. Could get away from them even more, and LSU can ill afford to go down more than four. You know, four is the magic number in baseball, especially at home. Still gives you that chance for the one swing tie. There's a strike on three and zero. Oh. But he's going to have to lock back in here. That's Kaminer starting to warm up for LSU. The senior, Brandon Kaminer. Just beginning to toss a little bit. Meanwhile, Northwestern's bullpen is as empty as a producer's heart. And you see Brandon Kaminer, who would love probably nothing better than the pitch here for a final time in an LSU uniform at home, but. That would mean Hasty can't get it done here. Only one out, a run in, two aboard. We are in the top of the ninth. Oh, wow. That's a fair ball. So LSU's going to get the, get the out there because Hayes thought it was. Well, Hayes is saying it hit me. Hay Hayes thought it hit him. Hayes did not run at all. He's claiming it hit him, not the bat. And a home plate umpire, he, he didn't call it. I mean, they're going to have to get together. And well, he called him out. He was watching Kobe the ball. Kobe Vitrine roll called the this a fair line. ball. It did hit his arm. 
in the batter's box. That that should be a foul ball. And watch the home plate umpire points. He's saying fair fair ball picked up by Doty. So Doty picked it up to the through the out, and they're gonna that's an out now. The umpires are gonna get together. Now can they challenge this? Is the question. Is this reviewable? Keep in mind in the Southland Conference, they do not have, you know, instant replay. They do. Well, this one is not going to be reviewed. Now, I wonder. So it's a 2 3 put out. Here's a guy who's had a great day at the top of the order. Fontenot takes a big swing. He has not been retired. He has singled four times. He has walked with the bases loaded. He has scored twice and he has stolen a base. There are runners at third and second. And we're being told that that's not a challengeable review by Northwestern State. That's not something that falls in the guidelines that can be reviewed if in fact that ball if it's hit fair, the batter in the box. If it's fair or foul it that, can only yes. be reviewed once the ball is past a base. Right. And so Bobby Barbier probably asked for a little help. Might have even asked the umpire, hey, what's is that reviewable? And whether not, it is or not, the umpire said no. Correct. That's a break for the LSU Tigers because it was pretty obvious on the replay. That's a pretty special picture. I don't know if that's Bobby Barbier's son, but pretty special picture. Had that little youngster in a ball game like that in the ballpark. Those are memories, huh? When you're that age, you mm -hmm. get to be a bat boy, you know, against LSU. That's something you'll remember. The one two pitch. Cold strike three a blazer over the outside corner and the inning is over in the top of the ninth but another run for the demons they have a four run lead the bottom of the ninth inning coming up it'll be Sanford and Thompson the first two hitters. Shareholders are very happy. The game is on the line as we go to the bottom of the night. Northwestern has scored in five innings and leads it seven to three. Sanford cues that one off the end of the bat foul. Mitchell is the DH today. He's one for two. He has lined out, singled, and thrown out trying to take second base. And he walked his last time. Drayton Brown, one of the best pitchers Northwestern possesses, trying to close it out. Oh, look at that Ooh. all speed pitch. <laughs> that was really, really good. Brown faced three batters and retired them all in the eighth. Took about 13 miles an hour off that changeup, and you saw Sanford about halfway through that swing. Yelled, was that another one? Try to yell stop. It was. When you make a hitter look foolish on a pitch, you go. You should always go right back to it until the hitter proves he can make an adjustment. He went to it three times in a row. He did. 
three change ups in a row. This one might have been the best one because it had that downward motion. You see Sanford. You've you got to like that. Northwestern just trying to close out this rare win against LSU, but you, you know the LSU hitters are, are excited. They want to make something happen, and then you get three three floaters like that, and you get discombobulated. There's another one. Hey, Beloso pinch hitting here. Beloso batting for Doty. One-0 pitch is laced into center field, but it's playable. Fontenot is there, and Northwestern is one out away from defeating LSU. And if I'm not mistaken, Ronnie, this would be the first midweek loss for the Tigers this year. You're correct. The final one. Albanario will have to wait till the weekend to see if he can get career win number 1,500, unless the Tigers can pull off a Tremendous rally. Here's Braden Doty. Braden Doty who had a moment last week against Louisiana Tech, went one for five, and that one was a thought he had a homer, ended up being a triple, hit the yellow line at the top of the wall, and that was his first career triple. It would have been his first career home run. It's a guy who's been a bullpen catcher most of his career, just doing the things that need to be done to make his team and his teammates better. One ball, two strikes. Drayton Brown is amped up right now. As well, he should be. He's ready to rock, and the Demons are ready to roll. The one two pitch. Swing and a miss. Six up, six down out of the bullpen for Drayton Brown. And a big moment for Northwestern State. Their victory total against LSU in the last 10 or 12 years is only a couple, now three. And three, what wins, was, three wins for the Demons in the last 11 years against LSU. What was to have perhaps been a moment for a 1,500 win celebration for Paul Maneri will have to wait. For the Demons, they'll head to Hammond in the next week to take on uh, the rest of the Southland Conference in the tournament at Southeastern. For LSU, it's all on the line. They take their 11 and 16 SEC record to College Station where they, they know they've got to win two out of three if they want hopes of advancing to an NCAA regional. So the drama goes down to the last weekend of the season. The season is over here in Alex Box Stadium. The final score, Northwestern State a winner by a 7-3 count. That's the story for former College World Series champion pitcher Ronnie Rance. I'm Len Rollins. Again, the final score, Northwestern State 7, LSU 3. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.